What's up everyone, Ryan here, and today I'm gonna provide a full tutorial for putting in EA Sports PGA Tour to help you improve your scores because putting, I think, is one of the hardest things in this game, especially for beginners. So I'm gonna cover it all for you today, go through my thought process, go through all the math that I use for uphill and downhill putts, and I'm also gonna go through some examples of different putts as well. So if you all get some enjoyment and get some help out of this, drop a like. It really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. And I have a full gameplay tutorial playlist for this game that you can check out. Link in the description to that. I'm going to be covering all aspects of this game. Already have a lot of tutorials out on the channel already. But my biggest request so far has been for a full putting guide. So hello everyone. This is Ryan from the future. So I actually came back and recorded this one after I made this tutorial. So my goal was to get this video less than 20 minutes but there's some great examples a lot of great stuff here so i didn't end up cutting it out i wanted you all to see all the examples i do go over six full examples here and go through my thought process on all of them some of them are shorter more basic ones but there are some extremely difficult putts in here so if you already know the basics, uphill and downhill putt calculations, you know how to read the grids, you know a lot about putting and you just wanna see my examples, go ahead and skip ahead to about the 16 minute mark. I have timestamps down in the description as well for you all to skip ahead through whatever you want. But there are six full examples and one of them is one of my greatest putts I've ever hit. So here we are on the green at Bay Hill. So let's just start with the basics and move on from there. So when you're in this position, right when you get on the green, best way to look around is actually by hitting the Y button on Xbox controller or triangle button on the PlayStation controller. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna click the non swing stick in and that's gonna change the view. For me, it's left stick. So when I click the left stick in, it's gonna change the camera angle. My favorite view is the low camera angle. So with this camera, you can use that same stick you clicked in, for me as left click, to move all the way around to look at the brakes. So this is a camera you will use quite often in this game to really get a sense of the green and the different slopes. You can click it in multiple times if you want a different view, but this is the main one I use. And a tip you can use, move the left stick back and forward to zoom out and zoom back in. So if you can't get a certain angle, you can actually use the D-pad down and you can move further back. So you can get much better looks by just moving the D-pad around different angles and you can really zoom out and move around. So this is the camera I use the most when I'm actually trying to map out my putts and figure out which way the greens are sloping. Now to reset your shot back to the way they had it, you're just gonna hit the X button. It's gonna take it exactly back to the start so that you can reset back at the cup. So just a review of the basics for grid lines. If you're new to golf or haven't played a golf game, when you see these grid lines in front of you, you see the lines running, running in different directions. That line is indicating that that is the direction of the slope. So if the beads are moving to the left, the ball is gonna make its way to the left when it moves over across those slopes. If the beads or lines are moving to the right, that means the ball is gonna move to the right across those slopes. So that's what you're gonna use to pinpoint your line in this game and to set up for all of your putts. Now, one thing that's important to note, at the time I'm recording this video, there are some bugs in the grids, which means sometimes the grids will be moving in one direction and the ball will break in the opposite direction. I, I refer to that as a ghost break. It's the grids lying to you. So when that happens to you, don't just know that you didn't read it wrong. The grids were showing the wrong value. Now they have the developers have come out and said they're going to fix that. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, that has been fixed. But you will see that when you play this game multiple times, you'll see the grid lines lie to you. But I'm going to give you tips to right now really use not only those grids, but also look at the slope of the green. And looking at the slope of the green is actually key in this game for really pinpointing the break. So with regards back to the lines, the faster the lines are moving left or right indicates how much more break there is. 
So you can see in this specific example, as we take a look at this, the grid lines near my golfer are much slower than the grid lines up by the cup. Uh, so the, the speed of the lines are moving much quicker closer to the cup to the right when the start of the break is actually moving to the left in the opposite direction. So this is a, du a double breaker putt. So it's actually a great example to start with here in this video. But that's the basics of actually reading the slopes and reading the grids as far as the left and right movement. The other thing you got to look at is the longitudinal lines. So the lines that are moving straight towards us, that's showing whether the putt is downhill or uphill. But in this game, you're going to have that information right at the top of the screen. So you can see the cup, you can see the flag at the very top. It says that this putt is 34 feet, but also uphill four inches. So that triangle or arrow pointing up is indicating whether the putt is uphill or downhill. If it's pointing up, it's uphill, pointing down, it's downhill. Now the increments, the values that it uses are inches. So it's in inches up to 11 inches, but then once it gets above that, it's either one, two or three or four and so on. So it rounds up. So since above one foot is gonna be approximate values you're not going to be able to nail that distances completely when you're playing on the harder difficulties in this game because there are two settings for putting in this game so as we take a look at this if you're playing on arcade or pro difficulty levels the putting aim point is actually at the cup i mean is actually assisted aim which means the game is going to count for uphill and downhill slope to preset the aim marker to a logical distance for the putt Another thing that's going to be on there is the putt read. So the putt read is this game's version of a putt preview, but it's not really a putt preview because in typical putt previews, you aim, you hit the button, and it tells you if you're how close you are. It tells you where the ball is going to go. In this game, it shows a line on the green for how the ball will get to the hole if hit on the correct starting line with the correct power. So they already give you the correct power if you're playing on arcade or pro and you have putt putting aim point to assisted aim. So it's gonna put a line on the screen. I'm not gonna put that on right now because I'm trying to teach you to learn how to play without that. Uh, and when you, if you could play without it, when it's on, you're gonna dominate in those in the arcade and pro tournaments because you're gonna already know how to read the greens and you're just gonna use it as kind of a, a little helpful tip. Uh, so I'm going to keep putting aim point as that cup and putt read off for this video. But keep in mind that when you have it turned on, it's going to calculate it for you. And you still have to move your aim marker and find the break. It's just going to show you that optimal line. So the most important thing when putting in this game is where to aim for uphill and downhill putts. So it's an easy calculation. For uphill putts, I use the number 1.5 multiplied by the inches shown to give me how many feet I need to aim past the hole to compensate for that uphill putt. So for this example, it's easy math because it's 150%. So four inches, half it is two, add two to four, that's six. Or it's just an easy, you can just do it, a lot of people can just do it in their head, 150% of four is six. Uh, so that means in order to hit the right distance, my right distance on this putt, I need to aim six inches further that would move my aim to 40 feet so i would need to move my d-pad up until i get to 40 feet on the screen right there so on the screen you'll get the indicator for how uphill it is at that specific spot where i have the aim marker but also you get that on any spot so you can move your aim marker and see okay it's level when does it start to change okay it starts to get uphill it starts to get uphill even more here so it's sharp uphill by the hole so you can use that information because uphill putts break less than downhill putts because you're coming at you're you're hitting them at a harder speed to get up the slope versus downhill putts you're hitting them slower so it's going to break a lot more. So that's why that information can be useful for you. But going back to this example, I would need to aim at around 40 feet to get the right holding speed, my holding speed. Keep in mind I hit my uphill putts pretty aggressive, which is why I use 1.5 as my calculation. Keep in mind when you're on slower greens, you may have to increase that. You may This may have to be eight feet. 
On tournament fast medium greens, 1.5 works really well. On slow greens, you may have to hit it a little bit farther. So pay attention before you start your round on the specific green speeds in that course, but you're gonna get a lot of information on your first putt of the round. If you play the first putt uphill as 1.5 and you hit it too short, you're gonna know, okay, I need to use a higher value next time. So let's use like 1.75 or two. So use that information when you miss putts uh, by a certain amount uphill. Be like, okay, I need to compensate. Putting is all about compensation in real golf and also in this video game. So for downhill putts, the number I use for downhill putts is a one-to-one -one ratio. So for four inches, if this was four inches downhill, I would aim four feet short. One thing that's important to keep in mind is on downhill putts, it's all going to depend on how aggressive the slope is. On downhill putts that are within about one inch to seven inches downhill, I will use a more aggressive ratio. I will aim like, instead of doing exactly one to one, I'll aim one to one first, and then I will add about one or two feet to it because I, I like to get aggressive on those shorter putts that are let, that are downhill but not aggressively downhill. Now putts that are one foot or more downhill, you better believe that I'm gonna play those that one-to-one -one or even more than that one-to-one. -one. And I will do some downhill, significant downhill examples and uphill examples in this video. That way you can actually see them in action. But I wanna get the numbers for you. Uphill putts, 1.5 times the inches shown to get your calculation in feet that you need to aim past the hole. Downhill putts, one-to-one -to, -one to get your calculation how much shorter you need to aim to compensate for the downhill. Is downhill putts are gonna go faster, go further than uphill putts. So that's, you have to compensate for the uphill and downhill putts. But for 90% of downhill putts in this game, I use less than a one-to-one -one ratio for inches to feet. A lot of the times I use a 0.75 because I get very aggressive on those putts. So if this was four inches downhill, I'm actually probably aiming at three feet less. So that'd be 31 feet. So I wanna get all this information out to you all before we actually get into the putt examples because in my PGA 2K23 and 2K21 putting tutorials, a lot of people are like, Ryan, you dove too fast into the examples without giving us all the information. So I'm not, I don't wanna miss anything this time here in EA Sports PGA Tour. So that's the reason I'm doing it this way. So one thing that's important to point out as well is that I said it only shows inches up to 11 inches right so after that it's going to be approximate values of one foot two foot three foot and so forth so as a general rule you can play it safe and just use 12 inches for one foot 24 inches for two feet and 36 inches for three feet and multiply that by 1.5 in the calculation but it's not going to be completely exact you may be short sometimes you may be too far and that's why the more you play this game you're going to start to learn that how fast those longitudinal grid lines are running at you to the screen, you're gonna start to be like, okay, this one, it says two feet, but this is probably more closer to three. So instead of using 24, I'm gonna use like 30 or something like that in my calculation. As a general rule, you can play it safe, 12, 24, 36, but just know that's not gonna be approximate. You have to use a lot of your instincts and your ability to respond and compensate mid round when you're really missing your distance. So the more you play this game, that's gonna come a lot easier. So when you're on the green reading a putt, for example, we have this putt, 34 feet uphill four inches. Our aim point we need to go to we already, we already did the calculation, 1.5 times four is gonna give us six. So I need to aim six feet further to about 40 feet. So that is my aim spot for my specific holding speed I like, 1.5. It's an aggressive line, but it also is gonna make sure I get there. So after I have my aim line set, the next job is to look at the break. The first spot you should always look is the bottom right of the screen if you're a right-handed golfer. If you're a left-handed golfer, the left bottom left side of the screen. But for me, you see that ball and it says green 100% and below that, it says 0.3 degrees above. That is showing how many degrees angle-wise the ball is above your feet. So it's showing your ball position relative to feet. It's either gonna say above or below. If it's above as a right-handed golfer, that means it's sloped to the left. 
So it, and that means this first grid shown here that's moving left is correct. That's how you test to see if the grid right in front of you is right. You all don't understand how many times I've looked at that. It said below or above and it's breaking the opposite direction you would think. Now, if this said below ball, that would mean the feet are above the ball. So the ball is below the feet. That means the ball is going to break to the right. So the grid line should be moving to the right if the ball is below your feet as a right headed golfer opposite if you're a left ball is above that means it should be the bead should be moving to the left at least that initial break so use that information first that's the first thing i always look at you can really pinpoint some of the grids that are wrong there and keep yourself from making a big mistake on the putt so after you take a look the next thing i do i i put way differently than in 2k23 if you all go back or maybe you all came from my 2k23 tutorials i used to assign numbers to all the grids the grids are not they're so much different in this game and they're really not a hundred percent accurate as the grid lines in 2k23 are a lot better uh, but these i think are not trying to be as accurate they they want putting to be really challenging so i actually do not assign numbers anymore in ea sports pga tour I like it better not. I'm gonna probably over time adapt a number system, but in my mind, I kind of don't want to because I want to get a feel for which way. I want to play this game by a little bit of feel and kind of really judging the break and using the slope versus kind of pinpointing that exact grid. Uh, so a little bit different putting approach here in EA Sports PGA Tour than PGA 2K23. But here are things to keep in mind. Look at every single grid line. See which way it's moving. It's breaking left. The ball is going to move left as it passes over that. And then if it's breaking right, it's going to move right. So for this specific putt, I know at the beginning when I hit the ball, the ball is going to break right to left because the grid lines are moving to the left. The first one, two, three grid lines are to the left. But then it shifts. That fourth grid line is moving to the right, and all the rest are moving to the right of increased speeds. So when I get to this putt, I know these first three grid lines are basically going to cancel out the next three that are moving in the right direction. So I don't really need to look at the first six grid lines. I just need to look at everything past that. So in this game, or and in real life, your putt is going to be traveling at its fastest speeds right off the club face. So you're going to always have less break right when you hit the putt, especially on uphill putts. And then you're going to have more break as the ball starts to slow down at the end. So we're going to apply that concept for this specific putt. It's going to be right to left at the beginning, and then it breaks back the opposite way those next three or so grid lines are going to cancel out the first few. So I'm just going to look at the last one, two, three, four, five, six grid lines. So for this specific example, I think we need to aim about a grid line over. A grid line in this game is about two feet. I th we, we measured it on a live stream at specifically 2.2 feet. So, but don't forget, once you change your aim, Go back to the beginning. Make sure you're in your, your perfect aim spot. A lot of times when I'm reading the putt, I change. So 40 feet. And then I need to aim left to the first grid specifically. At least that's my calculation. Now keep in mind, you're not going to make every putt. My goal is to not teach you to make every single putt. It's golf. It's not easy. It's going to be challenging. Mine is to give you the basics where you can learn, right? And how to get better over time. Put in putting, there's really no cookie cutter way to make every single putt. You're not gonna make every single putt. If you could, I don't think this game would be fun. At least it wouldn't for me. But if you have the tools and general knowledge of which way the grids are breaking and use your knowledge when you miss a putt, when you have a similar putt in the future, compensate. If you keep over, if you keep over reading putts, then start putting a little less in your calculations. So it's a mad putting is so much about responding and compensating during a round and between rounds. It's repetition and learning the game. So as we get here, we're going to go ahead and hit this putt. I feel like we have the line. Now, as far we get to the putting stroke. So in this game, the putting meter is always on. So with the putting stroke, as I move along here, 
This is a big question a lot of people has had. The putty meter automatically adjusts. You see that? Your main power spot you want to hit is the, the, the line in the middle. So what you want to do is move your aim marker back and get a fill for it. Really get a fill for the power. And I'm not even looking at the meter. You can look at whatever you want. I'm actually looking at the putter. And I'm really getting a fill for distance. I'm looking at the putter and I'm looking at the meter in my periphery. Because when I actually hit the putt, I look at the putter. A lot of people look at the meter, but I actually look at the putter. Now, in this game, if you're short, it's going to decrease the power on the putt. If you're far, you're going to hit it too hard, obviously. And also, tempo matters on the follow through. Tempo matters on the follow through. I repeat, a lot of people don't know that. So in PGA 2K23 and 2K21 in those games and the golf club, there was no tempo. But in the classic Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods 14 had tempo mattered on putts. And it matters on putts in this game, which means you really have to focus on that downswing. That's going to get better with time. It's not easy. It's a nice rhythm move. It's only the downswing tempo that's registered in the actual tempo. When you fast it, that putt is going to be hit too hard, right? When you slow it, it's going to take off distance. There's also another aspect to that. What I find is that when you fast and slow it, with golfers that don't have high putting stats, the putt will either move to the left or right when you miss. When you hit a perfect, it seems to always go where you're aiming. But when you hit a fast or slow, there is some randomness to it, and it'll move off to the left or move off to the right. So just wanted to point that out because sometimes you're missing putts and missing tempo and you're like, this wasn't where I aimed. It's because, well, it, there's a little randomness when your putting stat's bad. But as you increase your putting stat, those misses will be less punishing. So we get back to this putt we're on right now. We're aiming at 40 feet. I want to aim about a foot to the left. I'm getting a fill for the putt. And now next, all I'm going to do is just go ahead and hit the putt. So misread it just a little bit. So that was a really good red putt. Missed it by about a centimeter. So it was really good. Distance was great. 1.5 was the perfect distance holding speed. If I hit it a little bit harder, it probably would have went in as well. Would have took out some of the break. But still, that's the holding speed that I use. So again, you're not going to make every putt. But if you can get that close, wow. You're having a good day with your putter. So moving on to another example, we are on hole number four at St. Andrews and we are sitting with a 20 foot putt uphill two inches. So you're gonna find yourself in these positions a lot, 20 feet or less, quite a bit of break, at least from what it appears from the grid lines. So that's why I chose this specific example. First things first, get the distance. So 20 feet, uphill two inches. So we're going to 1.5 times 2. That's simple math, right? It's going to give us 3. So we're going to go 23 is where we need to aim. Now, I like to get more aggressive on more level putts. So if this was level, it was just flat, I would still aim about 1 or 2 feet past the hole. So instead of going 3 inches or 3 feet further, I'm going to go like 24 almost 25 go to 25 then back off one to be right at the edge of 24 for my distance okay so we have our distance set the next thing you look at is the feet position relative to the ball or the ball position relative to feet is the way it is in this game so bottom right of the screen the ball is sitting below the feet 0.9 degrees so that means that the grid should be moving left to right, at least the ones near the feet. And they are. So we know these grid lines are actually probably telling the truth. And it's actually a true left to right putt. These grid lines are actually moving pretty quickly, especially right. The first three grids after the ball are moving pretty quickly. But what's important to keep in mind is that the ball is going to be traveling at its fastest speed up that initial hill, which means those grids are not going to break as much as you would expect. So as I'm reading this, I'm going to break it up into a look at a few grid lines at a time, and I'm going to visualize the ball moving. I think it's very important for you all when you're reading putts, visualize the ball rolling through each sector and try to get your read that way. So I'm looking at the first two grid lines. I'm going to go ahead and compensate. I'm going to look at the next two grid lines. Go ahead and compensate for those specific grids. The next few and the next few. 
So we have our initial, kind of my initial read, but I gotta do the eye test now. Let's see, does this meet the eye test? Is this putt really gonna break this much? My initial thought is no. I do not think this putt is actually breaking this much at all. It's up the slope. I'm actually gonna take off a little, a, quite a bit more break because we're gonna be hitting this pretty firm. So I don't think it's gonna break that much. And also I wanna get a little bit more aggressive. So I'm gonna add a little bit of distance up to 25. So that is the eye test. I made compensations at the end based on, you can call it the eye test, the gut test, whatever your gut or eyes are telling you. So we have our read. Now let's get a feel for it. Move the stick back till you get a rhythm. And then we're gonna send it. Perfect stripe shot, get in. And we made it. So there you go. What a putt. And all of that, we made it because of the eye test. That is why it's so important. Do the eye test. Get your read based on each grid. But don't forget to apply what you've learned by playing this game a lot, by watching this video. We were hitting into an, an uphill putt just a little bit, and we were getting aggressive. So it, intuitively, I knew that the putt was not going to break as much as I initially read the putt. If that was downhill, the first line would have probably been correct. Uh, so there you have it. Let's go ahead and move into another example. So now we're on the green on the second hole, and we're stepping up to a much more extreme example because... You all are going to find yourself in these positions. So I want to show you how you can break down a longer putt, uh, extreme downhill as well. So we are sitting with this 61 foot putt. I actually find myself here oftentimes in this pin location at Bay Hill. So 61 feet, downhill 9 inches. So it's break it up. First thing you start with is distance. So downhill putts, I said, was a one to one ratio, right? So one inch downhill, I need to take off nine feet on the putt. So nine feet is gonna give us 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52. So 52 feet is gonna be our aim spot here for this specific putt. Next up, I always look at the ball position relative to feet. So we take a look at the bottom right of the screen, 0.6 above. So the ball is above the feet, but look at the grid line. You notice that the first grid line is not moving at all on a 0.6 degree slope. So it should be moving. It's just not registering. That's why it's so important to look at the ball position relative to feet. It should be breaking to the left because the ball is above the feet, which means it's sloping to the left. So as we take a look at this, pay attention to the grid lines and how fast they're moving. Remember when I said earlier, downhill putts break more than uphill putts. So that is because you're hitting it softer and also they're just gonna break more fiercely down a downhill putt versus uphill, you're gonna be hitting the putt a lot firmer. So you're gonna take some of that break out of it. For this example, I already know with about 20 so or more grid lines between me and the hole, we're gonna have to aim a lot to the right. So, in this specific example, I like to map out different sectors. So I'm gonna look at the beginning of the putt first. And I'm gonna look at the first six grid lines and I'm like, okay, the first six grid lines, I'm gonna go about a grid line over to the right. And then I'm breaking it up to the next six or ten or six, ten, whatever you wanna break it down to. And I'm just looking at that region. And then I'm going to go ahead and move my aim marker to compensate there. I'm going to go about two and a half there. And then you notice down towards the hole, it seems as we zoom in here, these grids are actually starting to move a little bit slower. So I don't think I actually need to play in as much break at the end. Now, as the ball slows down, it's going to move. It's going to break a little bit more. So I need to keep that in mind. So as I look at the last breaks, I don't think we're going to have to get as aggressive I'm gonna go about over here to this grid line. So that means we are about one, two, three and a half grid lines over to the right is my read. And all my goal with this is not to make it, right? My goal is to make sure I get this close enough to the hole so that I'm not left with an extremely hard comeback putt. Uh, so we're sitting here. I have my aim, I have my line. 
And I know some of you are like, well, how did you get to that point? It's a lot by feel. The more the grid lines are moving, the quicker they're moving, the more you need to aim to compensate. So in this specific example, they're moving pretty quickly and it's downhill. So I already know that I need to aim quite a bit to the right. The more you play, the more you, the more examples you see yourself, the more putts you hit and miss, you're going to get a better idea of how putts are breaking. Now, if you had the putting aim line turned on, the putt read, I highly recommend when you're learning this game, you turn on that putt read. It's going to really help you learn the grids and learn the different slopes. So let's go ahead and get into this putt and just hit it. You know, this could go, we'll see. My goal is just to get this one close, right? It's not It's not necessarily about making it, even though we always want to make it. So I'm getting a fill for it, filling for the line, and then we're going to send the putt. So I hit perfect tempo, overswung by 0.5%. That's pretty good. I will take that any day. That is something special right there from that far away to gauge that speed. So the one to one ratio was perfect, right? The one to one ratio was was perfect there on more aggressive downhill putts. I would probably aim a little less than that. I mean, a little more compensation for it. If it read like one foot, two feet, I would instead of doing just like 24 inches, I would probably play it as like 30 just to be safe. But it all depends on how much the slope and how fast the greens are on that specific route. Uh, so I will take getting that close any day. But you notice how perfect the speed was. The read, I've been playing this game a lot. You're going to learn the slopes and learn the grid lines. And you're going to get better each and every round you play. But let's go ahead and head into another example. So I wanted to get a little shorter example in here. Less than 10 feet. Because not only are you going to find yourself less than 10 feet a lot... But these are tough putts, and I'm going to show you how you can get pretty aggressive with your reads here to take out some of the break. So we're on hole number six at St. Andrews with an eight foot putt. Now, the nice thing about this eight foot putt is it is a level putt. As we take a look at this, so first thing to do, it's level. You can aim at the cup, but I'm actually going to add two or three feet to it. So I'm actually going to aim at 11 feet. That's how aggressive I get with these short putts. You don't have to get that aggressive, but keep in mind, if you're not getting that aggressive, you're going to have to play a little bit more break than I'm playing. So next up, we have our distance. Check the bottom right of the screen. The ball is sitting 0.3 degrees below the feet. So that means the grid line should be moving left to right. And in this example, they actually are. So it looks like the first two lines are moving about the same speed, one, probably about a 1.3 degree slope. And then the next one is moving a little bit slower. So it's going to kind of level out a little bit as it gets to the cup, but still breaking left to right. So visualize the ball rolling across each slope and make your compensation. Look at the first grid line, look at the second grid line, looking at the third grid line. So looking at this read, I think it's a pretty good line, but I want to hit it even a little bit firmer. So I'm going to go to like 12 feet and I'm going to take off a little bit of break because we are getting this ultra aggressive. It's, it's how I play short putts in this game. So there we have it. I think it. I changed with the eye test, took off some break, added some distance, and then get a feel for the swing, get in a rhythm, and then hit the putt. And we made it. So that is how I approach short putts. If it was downhill, I would do the same exact thing, except if it's like, Two inches downhill, I would aim, I would do the compensation one to one ratio downhill and aim two feet less, but then I would probably aim level at the cup because I get very aggressive or even more than that. I wanted to show you all how you can play short putts within 15 feet. You can get pretty aggressive with the putts like that. So here we are. We are sitting with an extreme downhill putt at Augusta National. So I find myself in this specific example too often so i thought this was a perfect example to show you all because it showcases a few things it showcases quicker greens but it also showcases the downhill more than one foot so we're sitting here keep it simple when you first get to the green first thing you want to take a look at is 29 feet and it's downhill one foot so first thing off set your distance so for example this one we don't know it could be 12 inches 
it could be more than 12 inches in between 12 inches and 24 more likely between 12 inches and 16 inches so i'm going to play this safe augusta national greens are quick i'm going to play this as 15 inches so 29 minus 15 would give us 14 so that means i need to aim at the 14 feet mark on this pot so what's really important when you're lining up for these pots and checking distance is after you check it do the eye test so i'm going to hit the y button click in the left stick a few times and we're going to take a look at this and we're going to move to this specific view is this view is going to show us the slope a little bit better so i could see that that is very aggressive slope left to right but behind the hole it stops to come back up the hill so it's uphill behind the hole so i can get pretty aggressive here as long as i don't miss it all the way down here at the bottom part of the screen and roll it down that hill so i'm still sticking with the 14 feet aim i think it's going to be a good line because i have that backboard if it was all downhill all the way i would aim on this one about 10 feet so then you're going to look at feet position relative to the ball so the ball is 2.7 degrees below the feet that gives you a sense of how much this putt is actually breaking so i'm going to aim I'm going to go about a foot for the first four grids. For the next five grids, I'm going to go about another foot. And then for the last few grids, I'm going to aim a little less than a foot. So we're almost at the one and a half, we're one and a half grids over. So almost three feet of aim to the left, three feet of break. That's what I'm anticipating. But always do the eye test. We get here and I'm like... I think this is actually a pretty good line. I could be completely wrong, right? I've been in this position a lot. You would think I would know this putt, but I don't. So here we go. Go ahead and get a feel for it. Feel for the distance. Watch for the club. And then I'm trying to get a rhythm. I'm trying to get a rhythm because tempo matters in this game on the putts. It's a nice, smooth flick forward. So we mess, we, I misread that, right? So barely it was a pretty good read needed to aim a little bit more to the left but distance was good i was getting a little aggressive on the line right because we had the uphill backboard at the end but you noticed it was a little bit more than downhill one inch like we anticipated if that was downhill behind the hole i would have played that a lot safer so now we're going to move to another downhill example and i find myself in these positions a lot and i wanted to choose this one specifically because you know how i said it's a one-to-one -one ratio typically with downhill putts here's an exception to that rule so we're sitting here at augusta national hole number two with a 52 foot putt but as we're sitting here 52 feet downhill 12 inches this is the first time speaking of i've never seen it show 12 inches i've always seen it show one foot for anything below 11 inches this is the first time i've actually seen 12 inches here as the indicator so treat it like any other putt to start we have a 52 foot putt downhill 12 a one inch to one foot ratio so i need to aim about 12 inches shorter that means i need to aim about 40 feet so we have our line, I mean line, we have our distance, theoretically. And then what we're going to take a look at is the ball position relative to the feet. Uh, the green, the ball is below the feet there at the very bottom right of the screen, which means the grids are moving left to right, and they should be by about two degrees. So on this specific example, I already know I need to aim a mile left <laughs> a mile might be an over exaggeration but as we take a look at this entire putt this whole thing is sloping left to right and if i miss this on the right side the low side that ball is rolling all the way off the green to the right we do have a little backboard up by the hole here so we do have a little backboard so my goal would be to miss somewhere up in this area my goal is would be i guess to make it but in this one i would be just giving myself a chance to two putt so these are the ones where i think it's really important to look at the green look at the slope this game you can really see the shadows the lighting I can really tell that this slope is so much left to right and it's also going to be a very fast putt so in this specific example, I know it's downhill 12 inches. It's going to be breaking a lot. So I'm going to break it up into sectors. I'm going to look at the four, first five grid lines. 
and I'm gonna my f instinct tells me let's aim about a grid and then next five or so grid lines about the same they're all moving the same direction and then about the same now I'm gonna keep looking and keep aiming and I know I know this might be a bit aggressive and we'll do the eye test at the end so how many grids am I over one two three four five I still think it's gonna break more than that I really do I think this is gonna break tons I think that six or seven might not even be the right call but this might it might even break more than this as crazy as that sounds but look at those grid lines look how fast they're moving look at the speed it's a downhill putt this thing is gonna move but remember i said one to one ratio for most downhill putts you're gonna be hitting into that slope that slope that side hill slope you're hitting right into which means it's gonna slow down the ball so that 40 feet you're actually gonna need to increase more i'm gonna use i'm gonna i think 45 feet 46 feet add about six feet to it maybe yeah i think six is good so then we're here and it's just like well it looks pretty good i'm feeling pretty good no i'm not feeling good about it but i'm feeling like maybe we get this within five feet that would be my goal but i want to do an extreme example because you all are going to find yourself in these positions and get super stressed at least i do uh, so if you can kind of have a good idea kind of how to play the speed and how to play them and then see more examples you're gonna so we're gonna go ahead and get a feel for it and we're gonna send the putt this could be interesting so i underswung so it may end up breaking more than we expect go in if we perfect that it's in what <gasps> okay well, uh, I was not expecting to get that close at all. Uh, I was just ex just wanted to show you all what it can, a putt can be like in that example. So, hey, we got there close. If we could get that close, that's a beautiful putt. Uh, but it was more to show you kind of how you approach those putts and that they can be done. We got that thing within two feet, which is kind of insane. I was not expecting to get that close, but what a great example. <laughs> I don't do that too often, but hey, it worked out in this video, I guess. But there you have it. Another thing, one thing that you can do as well, uh, go in. I talked about this earlier, but turn on the putt read. Turn on the putt read on every putt when you're learning this game. Feel, get a feel for it. See how the grids are breaking at different grid speeds. See how fast they're moving and how much it's breaking at that specific point. There you have it. That is my full initial guide on putting. That is how I approach every single putt in this game. Big thing for you all to pay attention to. Distances, 1.5 uphill putts. Easy multiplier. Downhill putts, 1 to 1 with some compensations on shorter putts a shorter downhill putt i get more aggressive on so instead of doing one to one i'll do like i'll aim one to one then add like one or two feet to it it is so important to respond each and every round round if you're constantly over reading putts get your initial read and then take off break to it if you're under reading every single putt get your initial read and add more compensation to it it is so important to respond and learn and really get into a groove in this way on the green have a sequence go through that sequence each time and know that you're gonna miss so many putts you're gonna miss so many putts this game is tough putting is tough i wanted to show you examples that are more challenging because if you can tackle the challenging ones you're gonna be able to crush the short ones uh, so stay tuned for more tutorial videos here on the channel if you got some enjoyment or found this helpful, be sure to drop a like. It really helps. Subscribe for more and check the full playlist in the description. It could be that there's more tutorial videos already live in this series. But I will see you all in the next one. As always, have a fantastic day, everybody.